Welcome to LabMinutes.com. In this video, we're going to look at different ways to deal with auto enrollments for your devices that needs to obtain certificate from your server. In our previous video, we have installed a enterprise certificate server on a Windows 2008. So just in case you have not watched that video, here's the staff setup that we have. So we have a Windows 2008 as being a domain controller and now running an enterprise certificate server. We have a test PC that we can use to test our web enrollment and an R1 uh, to test the SCEP protocol. So by default, when you, can, when you first configure the certificate server, um, for you to, or for a device to actually get a certificate through an SCEP, for every device you need to go to this particular URL and generate a one-time challenge password that you need to use um, as part of the SCEP request coming from the device. So right now we have router R1 that has requested that certificate using that particular challenge password let's say and we also if you look at the um, certificate server here's the R1 certificate that we have requested. So that particular key is tied to that certificate and if you go to um, let's go back to R1 and try to uh, request another certificate. Let's um, bring up a notepad real quick. Here is our configuration for our trust point. Let's delete that. Okay, and let's change a few parameters here. Let's say we no longer want to call it R1, we want to call it R2. So we make the, the new request as if the, the device is trying to request a, a totally new um, certificate. So you can go ahead and copy and paste that. Okay. And now we go back and do a crypto. Uh, let's type in here so it's faster. Crypto PKI authen. And then next we're going to do a crypto PKI enroll. So let's do authen first to obtain the root CA. Certificate, let's get yes. Next, we're gonna obtain the certificate of the device itself. Here, it asks you for the password, but if you try to go back and use the exact same password that was previously used for R1 certificate, now we just call it R2. Um, just go paste that in. No serial, no IP, and then request certificate. Let's see what we've got. You can see the enrollment request was rejected by the certificate authority. And if you go back to the server um, manager, look at the event. Now it said right here the password certificate request cannot be verified because it might have been used. So please obtain a new password and submit this request. So by default, what you need to do for every new device, you have to come here to this particular URL and request a new challenge password. So I just did a refresh refresh, and here's our new password. Now if you go and repeat the same process with that new password for for that. No serial, no IP again, and then yes. And now you can see here I succeeded. And if you go back to the certificate server refresh and here is our new certificate for the R2. Okay so this particular pro process might work fine and it's actually better security because for every device that you trying to um, obtain a certificate it needs uh, a new key to be generated so nobody just because somebody knows your IPs of the server that you're running CA on they can just spin up the device and then ask for a 
certificate. So it's good for the security in that regards. But again, if you're dealing with a large numbers of clients, this might not be very feasible. So for example, you have like uh, hundreds of wireless clients that needs to obtain certificate. Manually generating the challenge password one by one by one might not be very practical. So what you can do, you can disable that challenge password process entirely and this is done through a uh, register a registry key so let's do that let's go to do go back to reg registry um, edit or editor and if you follow the path it's local machine software Microsoft um, cryptography and then MSCP. So if you look at these folders, there's a folder called Enforce Password. So what you want to do, one being enforcing the password. So if you want, or if you no longer wants to use the challenge password, you can set that to zero. Go OK. Now we just made the registry change. We should restart the service just to be safe. Okay, and now let's try that again. So let's not let's uh, take a look at um, one noticeable change. So if you go back to that URL that we obtained the challenge password before and refresh account, you can see that you no longer have that uh, challenge password generated for you because that feature is now disabled. So let's go back to our R1 and remove all the certificate that it has so far and let's um, repeat the process here we're just going to call it R3 um, copy paste yes and now we're going to do the enrollment paste so now it's still prompting you for the password however this password is actually not Nothing, it's got nothing to do with the challenge password anymore that we um, used to obtain from the server, from the web server. This password can be pretty much anything that um, you want. So here we can just do Cisco, Cisco, no serial, no IP, and then request certificate. And you can see with just some random password that we come up with, like Cisco, it's still letting you. Um, succeed in the enrollment process. So now the R1 has received their certificate from the server. And if you look at the certificate here, now it's become number eight with uh, R3 being the issue to entity. Okay. So now the device has pretty much a complete freedom as far as the, um, when and where they want to obtain their certificate. So it makes the, um, a deployment for a large number of devices more becomes uh, feasible when you need to deploy the certificate to those devices. However, um, some might see this as a security concern so you might have like an unauthorized device out there that somehow uh, has discovered your certificate authority server IPs and all of a sudden they're able to um, obtain the certificate without your approval. Although this is very convenient, um, if you want to have a better control as far as what device will be issued a certificate, what you can do is you can, basically what's happening is what you call an auto enrollment with auto approval. What you want to do is to restrict that uh, approval process. Basically, we want that request to come in and um, do not want to have the certificate issued immediately, but having um, the, the need to wait for the CA manager to manually approve those requests. So if a manager comes in and see anything that's unusual and should not, um, request, should not be requesting certificate, those can be denied. So 
to uh, in order to do that you go to certificate template so you'd select the certificate and this is on the certificate templates basis so you can have different policies for different certificate templates but here we have the one that we created and you right click and properties and again this is another reason why you would want to create your own certificate template because but um, if you look at the default templates um, they would not present you with this option so we need to go is assurance um, requirements and there's a checkbox right here that says CA certificate manager approval so by checking that checkbox it basically disable auto approval for any certificate that comes in whether it's coming in through the web enrollment or the SCEP so go OK let's take a quick look all right so since we only enable it for um, the template that we created which we are currently use for SCEP only we're going to go back to R1 and again delete that so paste no here we're gonna call it four paste yes and then enroll again password could be anything as long as consistent and no no yes okay and you can see one immediate difference is if you scroll right up above a few seconds later or actually a second later you should either receive a receipt uh, receive, receive their certificate or reject um, message but here we did not receive neither of that and the reason being the certificate request has not actually been approved yet so if you refresh you can see there's no new ones and if you go under pending requests you can see there's a request ID 9 that is pending for a manager approval okay and if you go to R1 and you show crypto uh, PKI cert See here, the R4 certificate is in status pending. So it has not received any reply from our server, whether it's uh, rejected or issued. So this is where the manager would come in and say, OK, this request looks acceptable or legitimate. I'm going to go ahead and issue that. Or you can do deny if you want. But here, it's just going to do issue. And as soon as you do that, that pending request, is put into or moved into issue certificates folder okay although the request has been approved r1 has uh, has no um, idea that the request that sent earlier has been approved so if you look at that it's still set pending okay so the server actually doesn't say any notification to r1 so what r1 actually has to do is you have to cancel the previous enrollment okay as you can see here it said current certificate enrollment will be canceled and they basically just reissue that command since the certificate has already been approved or and issued see no no yes the server at this time will return the certificate to the device Okay, just to prove that the certificate name R4 is now received by R1. Okay. So here now uh, you have it, the three different ways you can deal or you can use to, to deal with the auto enrollment process on the Windows 2008 certificate server. So for for lab environment, you might 
just want to disable the challenge password totally, but for the production environment, um, you might want to enforce the manual approval process so a broke device um, would not be able to obtain certificate without your knowledge being an administrator. Okay, so thank you for watching Labinance.com. I'll see you guys in the next video.